Hi everyone, my name is Jason Koo and today I want to show you how to take information from Assembly AI and move it into a Neo4j graph database. Now, if you haven't heard of Assembly AI before, they have a suite of speech to text and speech related large language models and a number of supporting products and features on top of that. The feature I'd like to focus on today is what is called entity detection. So under their, their audio intelligence section, there's an entity detection uh, <clears throat> entry. And so basically what this feature does is, is it pulls out the names of certain people, organizations, locations, and provides it as a list. Now, the team over at Assembly AI has graciously put in some sample code that will run right out the gate. So what I'm gonna do is take that code and I am oop, going to make a folder for it. I will call this Assembly AI Neo4j. I'll go into here. And what I will do is I will open it up with Windsurf today and do a little vibe coding to move things along. Okay, so here, first thing I'm gonna do is use UV as the dependency manager. So to initialize, just do UV init. And here we can see UV has put in a hello.py file. We'll re we will replace this with the sample code and I'll just name the, rename this app.py. And I have to add in the dependency. So UV add assembly AI. I need to add in the API token for assembly AI. And to do that, all you have to do is log in and go to the API key section and here I will create a new one. Call this Neo4j demo. Okay, so I'm gonna copy here, add it to, or replace this placeholder and run this again. Okay, uh, so what we see here from the output is, are all the entities. So here we've just got the, the text that was extracted, the, the type, so categorically what type it is, and then the timestamp inside the audio file of uh, the start and end of when this person was mentioned. And so let's do this. Uh, add or connect and push data to Neo4j. And you will have to add the Neo4j library. So just UV add Neo4j. Okay connect and upload the entities data to Neo4j. Now let's see what kind of code it produces. Okay, the code edits it suggests is kind of intermingling the Neo4j and assembly AI code, which is just fine. So here we will add in our Neo4j credentials. We'll spin up a instance of the driver and this will create a single entity for each entity in the record. That's what it looks like it will do. Okay, so this is okay. Um, but if we had like a, a large number of entities, like, you know, thousands plus, this is probably not going to be the most efficient way to push data into a Neo4j database, even locally. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna replace all this. And instead of initializing the driver separate, what I'm going to do is use a context manager. Uh, so I'll just put this down here actually to make it easier to follow. I'm gonna do with, uh, perfect. So with graph driver, password as driver, yep. What I'll do is run driver and so there are actually three APIs to uh, three general APIs for running Neo4j cipher queries uh, with the Python driver and uh, I recommend using the execute query um, this one so in the context manager this will close the connection once it's done so it's generally um, kind of cleaner and easier to use Okay, so here, the original code that it suggested here uh, from Windsurf was to create 
or entity node for every entity record. So what I'm going to do instead is use the unwind statement, which is going to be more efficient for uh, processing a list of data. So unwind, let's see, ah, perfect. But instead of using create, I'm going to use merge because merge will prevent uh, duplicates with the same uh, name. So here, all right, we want name and we'll do type. And we also, uh, so here I'm just going to create a node for every entity and not add in the start and stop times. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, and then over here. So for adding parameters to the query, uh, instead of adding a dictionary to a dictionary of parameters, what you will do is you will uh, dynamically add in the parameters directly to the call. So here entities equals transcript entities. Now I need to make sure that a graph database or a local instance is running. So I have Neo4j desktop running and I've got a blank database called assembly AI and I'll just confirm that it is empty. Yep, nothing in there. So I'm going to run this by going, oh, I'm going to update the password, which is very strong. Um, so the entities object may not work, um, uh, is not maybe a map um, or a dictionary that your 4 j driver can work with. So we'll just do a simple conversion here. Uh, entity data. And we want to create a list of objects. So we'll call that name. Um, this is the text and type. Entity type. Yeah, okay, I'll we'll just put in the start and stop for now. Okay, so that's all the information that is available in an in a entity object. And we'll swap this out for the entity data. Okay, we'll run this again. Entity type, uh, buh, 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 buh. entity underscore type. Okay. If I go back to the database and I check records, I can see I've got a number of entities here. Great, so this is how we can push very simple data into Neo4j. Now, this data in, in its current form is not graphy at all and not particularly useful. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, merge and we'll do start. Oh, and we'll call this a uh, timestamp, right? Start, and you know what? We'll just keep the name. Uh, so, e, yeah, we'll do starts at, and here it would be you. aggressive autocorrection here and then ends at and here uh, yeah. this should do is it should split that timestamp and create uh, that relationship right which is here starts at and ends at now I'm going to clear the database uh, because we have existing nodes here okay and then I'm going to run this again Okay, so we can see here just by changing the cipher statement and none of the parameters, I'm able to associate the entities with various timestamps. All right, which is much better. Uh, but still, like it, this is kind of like a disconnected graph, right? We know that all this data came from the same source, so that should be notated in the graph. So what I'm going to do is add in the source document. And so we're just going to modify the cipher statement to merge in the, we'll just call it uh, like a source. And the audio file should be, yep, just the URL. Now, <clears throat> when you run the unwind statement, which is very efficient for processing lists, you can't put that right after, uh, right after a merge command. You need to kind of pass it into a sub function. Oops. 
So we just need to put in a width. And so we're going to pass it in that source file that we've created. And we're going to pass in the uh, entities. So here I'm passing in the parameter, but I need to assign it to a uh, variable. So, I, so let me audio file is uh, I'll do it here. Merge E. No, we'll do it this way. D uh, has entity E. Uh, and we'll do contains. All right, you can name it whatever. Uh, but this is just the name of the relationship that ties the source document to the entities extracted. Right. Okay, so this should work. Okay, so we can see here we have the start of a, of a knowledge graph. So we've got here, we've got the source, right? Which is the URL of the, of the source audio file. From this audio file was extracted these entities. And these are the timestamps. So anyways, this shows you how to get started with taking um, entity de detection data from assembly AI and putting it into a Neo4j graph database. So uh, this is a pathway for moving uh, audio data into a graph database so that you can do other graphy things like running graph rag systems on top of audio data. All right, thank you much. Happy coding and we'll see you in the next one.